So, first of all, let me start by saying sorry. I apologize for not uploading any videos for quite some time. But I had a concussion, I got it somewhere in the beginning of December and I thought that I would have enough energy to do some stuff to shoot videos, but I didn't. And then my test week for school was coming up, so I needed to study for that and then I didn't have time to write any of the new chapters for the Cottage of Dreams. So there are going to be videos from now on again up every week at least I'm going to create a schedule as well uh, but I don't have the schedule ready yet so keep posted for another video because then I will reveal hopefully I will have the schedule done somewhere this week and then there will be regular uploads but today I wanted to talk a little more about a subject I think you get in the steam of the tea in vision but I wanted to talk about a subject you know, of, about which I already talked in my video with the gods. It was a ramble video, I think. I will link it in the description down below. But the subject was about depression and how I have been depressed myself and what, uh, what okay means. And I want to talk a little more about uh, my depression. Not too much, but I also want to want to talk about some things that were important to me that helped me through my depression. So uh, I was depressed from age 8 till 16, somewhere around that, and it was mainly due because of an unstable home and getting bullied and I just, uh, I grew up with, my mom didn't mean to send me the message but because of my brother being autistic I was taught that uh, in order for him to communicate better in order for us to communicate better with him that we shouldn't show too much emotions so I took it as as a young child I thought she meant you are not allowed to show any emotion ever so when I was getting bullied in high school and not so much in primary school but because I thought that I wasn't allowed Lucas because I thought I wasn't allowed to show any emotion I didn't talk about them so a lot of the stuff that I was feeling I just kept it in and that is not a very healthy thing to do but one of the things that I noticed that was very hard to maintain uh, when you are depressed or when you are going for example through a psychosis for schizophrenia or PTSD or something something likewise it's very hard to I accidentally shook the camera I think <laughs> that it's very hard to maintain your personal hygiene because it is just not a priority because if you're depressed and I stayed in my bed a lot I didn't go to school that often I was home sick a lot of the time but I just stayed in bed because I felt like life itself just didn't have a reason there was no purpose to life, so I just stayed in bed because why would I do anything? And personal hygiene then also comes into play because if you don't go outside and you don't go to meet other people, then what is the use of, for example, brushing your teeth or combing your hair or doing your nails, doing your makeup? And those are things like the makeup and the nail polish. That is not something that you have to do. It is not, but it is a level of taking care of yourself and wanting to look good for yourself not necessarily for others but because you want to take care of yourself and you want to make yourself look pretty and of course cleaning your teeth and brushing your hair if you don't go outside then you don't get all the people who are telling you like is everything okay because you look kind of well kept you you don't obviously take care of yourself so if you don't get that then the need to take care of yourself and your body just isn't there because it doesn't matter because life itself doesn't matter and so why would you brush your teeth because it all doesn't matter so that's one of the things that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about or don't realize that personal hygiene is not necessarily one of the things that you think about when you're depressed 
or when you suffer from an other personal or mental disorder. And it is very, it was one of the first steps for me to realize like it is okay. I get, I couldn't leave the house two years ago because then I suffered from PTSD and I couldn't leave the house and so I didn't take care of my personal hygiene and at some point I was just like well but I did enjoy wearing makeup and I really enjoy nail polish so even if I don't go outside why don't I just do it for myself and then I started with that just doing my nails every morning and just changing the colors every now and then and it just helped me taking that first step to loving myself and actually feeling like I don't have to do it for others but I can do it for myself so that was a big important step for myself number two was the wall of positivity and it also has something to do with the tree but let me tell you when I was still living at my mother last year I had a wall it was on the closet or something and I had collected over the years a lot of cards, cards with funny looking animals on it or positive quotes and I all stuck them to that closet on that side and it was like my wall of positivity so every time I was down when I just looked at that wall it was just something positive that had me smile and also in my phone there is this message that pops up uh, when you restart it again and I changed it was used to be to the default settings it was something like uh, have a nice day or something but I changed it to don't forget to smile today and every time when I charged my phone again and I had to but every time I used to start it up again it showed a message like don't forget to smile today and it made me smile and it was like the wall of positivity it was something that made me smile every day and now even though I don't suffer from the PTSD anymore or from the depression I now have kept my Christmas tree but it's not a Christmas tree anymore it is now the tree of and I have to remember uh, my bucket tree because you can have a bucket list but I thought I want something because I don't have the wall of positivity anymore because I don't really need it but I want to work on my long-term goals so I got gift cards like the little ones you can attach to gifts to others for Christmas from my mom's girlfriend and they had these cards with flowers on them and some of they, them say thank you so on all of the ones with flowers I wrote the things that I still want to do, my bucket list and on all the cards uh, that say thank you I wrote what I already accomplished in life and what I'm thankful for because number two what I think is really important is that you don't only focus on everything that you still want to achieve or still things that you still want to do or that you want to happen to you that you also focus on all the things that you've already gotten on the things that you've already accomplished because it's very easy to get lost in the things that you still want to do or that seem to be out of reach so just focus on what you've already got which if you write them down maybe it's a longer list than you might expect number three is nature it is often said and it is quite true actually so that's why I'm repeating it but going outside and just take a walk like 15 minutes every day at the very least already helps quite a lot and if like me you when you when I suffered from PTSD it was very hard for me to go outside because a lot of the sounds from outside just sounded 10 times hot, louder in my ears so at some point I just didn't go outside anymore so instead I took walks like late at night or very very early in the morning when it was a lot calmer outside so there weren't a lot of sounds because you don't have to go out in the middle of the day well maybe if you live if you live in a dangerous neighborhood you kind of have to so maybe that's a lim limitation but going outside just it really helped me just some fresh air and the surroundings itself and seeing nature change because I am 
a person who really likes to stay inside and just cuddled up with a book and sometimes I forget them to, to go outside. But because I have a dog, I have to walk him three times a day at the very least. And it helps me to go outside because he has to go. And dogs really help as well because they get you outside. This is the point on my little piece of paper here, but I will go that can go with number three with nature. Going outside just really helps because it is just a lot of positivity in there. And the fresh air really helps, the scenery itself really helps. Just for example, take your camera outside when you take a walk if you don't if you think walks in itself are boring or take your notebook and write something or sketch something or maybe go on a quest to find the perfect stone I don't know, you choose but going outside is really a healthy thing to do even when you're not depressed and then we go on to number four do what you want and I don't mean go break all the rules what I mean is that you should do what makes you happy and that is not, it is often easier said than done because you don't always get to have the job that you enjoy doing. Sometimes you have to do something that you don't like. But you do get to decide what you do in your free time. And you do get to decide where you go in your free time. So instead of going, for example, if you go to the club because you want to meet boys, but you don't go to the club because you enjoy clubs, then you're not going to meet the people that you enjoy hanging out with. Because they don't share the same hobby or the same interest with you, because you don't like going to clubs, so why would you go there? If you instead just really like going to the library, then go to the library, maybe sign up for a book club or something like that. Do things that you enjoy and you will meet people who can inspire you and who have the same interests as you. Or maybe people go to the library because they have to study and they are forced to sit there. But let's look on the positive side of it. <laughs> so just do what you want to do. And one other important aspect of that is it's okay to do things on your own. You don't always have to do things. Well, I said that maybe a little too quickly. Because there are people who don't enjoy doing things on their own and they need other people. But if you're afraid that it's going to look funny, for example, to go to the movies on your own, it's really not a weird thing. Maybe because people haven't seen it before, or because people don't understand how you can go alone. But I, since two years ago, I started going to the movies on my own, and it's so relaxing to me. Because I don't have to think of anyone else, well, of course, of the other people who are sitting in the cinema. But I don't have to wait for someone to turn up on time. I don't have to wait for someone to to go there because I always like to be somewhere at least 20 minutes early. I don't know why, I'm strange, I know. But it's so relaxing sometimes to just go alone. And it's so relaxing to just go to the museum alone sometimes. And that's okay. You don't always have to enjoy hanging out with other people. So you do need other people because it's a healthy thing to talk to others, so don't forget that. But it's okay to be alone sometimes. And then eventually, number five. I already talked a little bit about this in my other video. Uh, what does it mean to be okay? Because a lot of people are going to tell you when you're sad or when you're sick for instance, but let's stick with the depression side because that's what I'm talking about. If people tell you that at some point everything is going to be okay, everything is going to be okay. Okay means that sometimes life is going to suck. Okay means that sometimes things aren't going the way you planned. Maybe more often than not they are not going to go as, the, as you planned. And that's okay. Sometimes you're going to cry. That's okay. Sometimes you're going to be really angry if life is going to be unfair and that's okay and sometimes you're going to be really really happy about something and that's okay and at some point you may fall in love or you may not you may choose to stay on your own and that's okay eventually getting to a point where you can live with the negative 
and the negative doesn't outweigh the positive, that's when it's okay. When you have enough strength to carry the burdens and the negative things, and there is enough positive to help you carry those burdens, then it's okay. But it's not, okay doesn't mean perfect. It's, when you reach okay, it's not going to be like La La Land where everything is always going to be okay, perfectly okay. You're going to cry sometimes when it's okay. You're going to be angry sometimes when it's okay. And maybe if you're suicidal at this point in your depression, then when you reach okay, you're still going back to those thoughts because that's the only way you knew how to handle the emotions. And if you don't act on them, but eventually you learn how to cope with those feelings and eventually you will learn how to deal with the negative emotions other than trying to harm yourself, then you've reached the game. But maybe in today's video you heard something that may help you or that may inspire you or you have some tips of your own what helped you through your depression or something else that you're struggling with so that maybe we can help each other anyway thank you for watching this video and like i said i'm going to try to make a schedule for what kind of videos are going to be uploaded on which day so that it isn't as random as it is right now anyway so i hope to see you in the next video and have a lovely day goodbye